thank you for having me here. And uh, I just want to say before I start how great it is to see so many people here interested in building for the web and on the on on mobile web on the on mobile. Um, it's really encouraging, and I really appreciate Google organizing this event and inviting us here. Um, it's really great to see. So my name's Ben Kelly. I work at Mozilla. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you today about what we're doing to support progressive web apps and the mobile web in Firefox. Um, see if the clicker works. It does. I'm on the DOM team, the document object model team, which doesn't sound very exciting, uh, but it, it actually is. There's always something new, a new surprise. Um, it's really a, a bunch of C++ and maybe Rust developers trying to write APIs and tools to help web developers, to help you guys provide a good experience for people on the web. Being C++ developers, we often get things wrong. Um, but in this case, with progressive web apps and uh, th these set of technologies and APIs, we really get the sense that, that the, there's a lot going right here, and we're very excited about it and um, working hard on it. So I guess as a way of background a little bit, I joined the service worker effort and the DOM team a little over two years ago. I'd never implemented a web API before. Uh, and my, my new boss, Andrew, was like, you know, why don't you join service workers? You know, we, it's been going for a little while, but we want to ramp it up. It's a lot, a lot of work there, but it's not too hard. So we should be done in September, maybe? <laughs> and that didn't happen. Um, and that's right. Well, Maybe six more months. Yeah, that's a long time, a long, long time. That didn't happen either. And eventually we just said, please, oh, wrong button, please stop asking us. And um, we, we don't know when we're going to be done. There's, it's a very complicated API. And uh, I give credit to the people I work for that they gave us cover to do this because there was a lot of pressure coming um, from all sides. So finally we were able to enable it to ride the trains as we say, to go to our release channel December of last year, and it shipped in Firefox 44 in January of this year. So a year and nine months, or thereabouts. So it's been a, a long road. Um, I think it was worth the wait uh, to, to get to do it right. Um, some of the things we spent time on was security. As I'm sure you're aware, uh, the web is built around the same origin policy. We use URLs to tell if the, a resource is safe for a site, if, it's, if they're coming from the same domain, the same origin. One way to look at service workers is a great tool for lying about URLs. You, know, you ask for a URL from site X, and you give it a URL, the content from site Y. And this is, if your security is based around URL checking, uh, you need to build a secondary system for this uh, to maintain the same origin policy. That being said, we have since changed the spec so that the URLs actually get flowed back from the service worker to the outer bits of the browser. And so no one has implemented this quite yet, Chrome or Firefox, but um, I think it'll, it should help uh, make the security story a little bit easier for browsers coming along later, implementing it next, that they don't have to completely build a separate tainting system in their browsers. So hopefully that'll speed things up for the next, uh, for the next set of browsers. Um, also, we found that you know, there was some room for improvement in the specifications. Um, Junki, uh, Jake, and Alex have done a great job, but it's one of these things, just the way stuff happens, where you write an explainer, you get an initial implementation, you translate it into some spec text, which is almost precise, but not quite. You can't execute it, and there are invariably bugs in this, the spec text. Um, and when we came to implement it from the spec, we found, for example, had race conditions and various unexpected behavior that um, I would pester Jake and Junki about. And that's all been fixed now uh, in the spec. And again, we hope that this, this took a while, but we, we hope it will uh, speed implementation in later browsers and helps maintain compatibility uh, between Chrome and Firefox today. We also took a lot of time working on tests. The Blink team. Let me back up. Uh, a lot of browsers historically, we obviously have a lot of automated tests that run. Um, most browsers typically have, have had their own test suite. In Gecko, it's Moki tests. Uh, I don't 
quite know what the other browsers have, but the Blink team did a great job writing for this new uh, test framework called Web Platform Test. It's a standard place in the W3C that lets us share tests between browsers. It wasn't quite easy to import because they still were using some of their own infrastructure, but we imported that, uh, upgraded it to the standard Web Platform Test, and wrote a lot of new tests, and it's now been uplifted back to, uh, back to the, um, the main repo. And I can, I'll just hop out of here for it. So you can, you can go and see, like there, there's just a ton of tests. Uh, and there, this isn't even adequate. We need to keep adding more. But uh, this, uh, getting these tests is the best way to, to make, make sure that these features work across browsers. And it's great now that we have a place where we can share tests like that. Um, we also did a lot of documentation whenever we implement a new API. Our, um, we have a team of people who go and document it on Mozilla Developer Network. So if you have questions about the API, you can find it there. We really want this to be a resource for the web, not just Firefox. So if you see anything that needs to be fixed, you, it's a wiki, you can fix it, or let us know and we will get it fixed. Um, we also had a group of engineers, uh, Salva De La Puente and some other engineers. Uh, Salva's here today, if you want to talk with him. Um, some other engineers built a great uh, resource uh, called the Service Worker Cookbook. It's just at this site. I'll blow this up so people can see. Um, Serviceworky.rs. I'm not quite sure how you say that, <laughs> so we call it the Service Worker Cookbook. But it has an, a large number of examples. Again, not using any frameworks. You, if you want to learn just how the service workers work directly, you can work through some of these examples. Um, and it's of varying levels of detail. The B means beginner, I means intermediate, and the A means advanced. So you can see there's uh, a number of different use cases here. So we're, we're trying to uh, help with the developer outreach as well. Um, so all that took time, but it shipped. Okay, and the great news is we're seeing people use it. This data is pulled from our beta developer edition and nightly users. Uh, by default, we don't collect uh, this sort of telemetry data on our release population unless they navigate through the advanced menu and click, please collect more information on me. Um, not many people do that. So this is largely beta developer edition and nightly. So the absolute numbers are not as significant as the trend here. And there's a clear up and to the right trend, and it's accelerating, which is great. Uh, when I work nights and weekends, I tell my wife that what I'm working on is important, and it's great when people actually use what we're working on, because it means I told her the truth. <laughs> um, we've also been working on push, uh, which shipped in Firefox 44. This is the web push, push notifications. We also have HTTP2 push, but I'm not talking about it here. Uh, but it only shipped on desktop for now. Uh, we are working on Android support, but there's a lot more operating system level integration that needs to happen here. We were really hoping it would make 48, but just before uh, this meeting I, uh, last week, I got some news that we found some additional bugs that'll probably ship in 49, is more likely. Um, and you may be saying, push on desktop, is that even useful? Most people think of it as a mobile feature. Well, I, I use it every day. I probably spend too much time on Twitter um, but when I'm supposed to be working, I have Twitter closed, and I can get push notifications uh, for messages and mentions. It's a feature that they have relatively buried in their settings currently. I think it's a little bit of a soft launch, but it's, um, it works every day. And I, I don't think I'm the only person using it because, again, the trend here, uh, the absolute numbers uh, are not as important, but the trend is definitely up and to the right and increasing. So that is also good. Uh, we're seeing adoption, which is, I think, a sign of a good API, or a useful API. Some other uh, work we've been doing on push, uh, Martin Thompson and engineers from the other browsers have spent a lot of time standardizing the back end. Uh, when, you know, right, I believe Chrome just shipped uh, support for the standard web push API previous to that, I believe they're using uh, GCM, Google Cloud Messaging. But now that we have a standard, it's, it's something that makes it easier for the back end and the way uh, uh, sites can integrate with those servers, because it does require this extra uh, server integration on the back. 
Um, we also built a, an impl a reference implementation of the, of the server, which, if you're interested in this sort of thing, the backend server describes all of our architecture if you want to know how a push message actually flows completely from when you post it all the way back to the browsers, or to, the, to your users. Um, you can read through this documentation. It, these slides will be available after, so you can see the, the links. Um, you probably wouldn't run this server yourself unless you're building your own browser, but uh, that, that's possible too. Uh, um, again, we have documentation on MDN, and the Service Worker Cookbook I showed earlier has a lot of examples for push as well. Let's see. So next, I want to talk about DevTools. We, I'm going to break out here and do a little bit of a live demo. And uh, in the beginning, we shipped something that was fairly bare bones because uh, we wanted to get service workers out. Very similar to, I think it was Chrome internals, service worker, I can't remember the exact name of the equivalent in Chrome, but you know, fairly bare bones HTML page for managing these things. Uh, we now have support for worker debugging. So originally we, we, we did not have this. Um, but it, uh, currently, it's really only usable for like, debugging fetch and push events. Uh, we, we're still working on uh, support for ins debugging the install process, which is obviously a big use case. But uh, let me show. So instead of about service workers, you can now go to your DevTools menu, click on service workers, and it'll bring up this new about debugging page, which will show all your service workers. Um, I'll just open a new window here for my slides, which have a service worker registered. You can see now that um, my, uh, I have the service worker for uh, my local host is now running because it has this push and debug um, buttons. If I push debug, it will open a full screen debugger uh, because I'm in full screen mode. And you can um, see the service worker that I'm running. Uh, and uh, let me, sorry, this is probably small for you guys. And I will blow this, I'll, I'll set a breakpoint in the fetch event handler. Uh, pull out a full screen for a second. And I can now reload this and it will break. Sorry. And you can do the things you would expect to do. You can inspect the request. You can see that, well, I did a, a reload. So it's requesting the, all the uh, resources with no cache to revalidate everything. You can see that it's a navigation. You can see the, uh, what the refer policy is, all the stuff you expect to do. Um, so I will close that. Go back to my slides here. And these are sc screenshots of what I just showed. Network panel, uh, I will, actually, I think I'm just going to use the, uh, the screenshot here. Um, but network panel, you can go and, um, and, excuse me, network panel now shows if a resource comes from service workers. You can, you can see here uh, that in the uh, transfer type, if it came from a service worker, it will show you. Uh, again, we shipped something bare bones. You would get lines in the network panel, but it wouldn't really show you where it came from or what happened. You could just see nothing for the, the, uh, the timing. We, we are still working on adding timing traces so you can see how much time it took to start the service worker. Um, but again, uh, we're making progress and we can iterate now. Uh, we also have a storage inspector which, uh, this one I, I will show. Uh, again, you may, you may go to DevTools and be like, where is my storage panel? Well, you have to go into the, the tools here to enable it, uh, this checkbox here. It's not on by default currently, but if you come to cache storage, you can now see all the resources you have. Again, a, ni a nice feature, you can access this stuff through console using the API, but this is just a, a little bit nicer. Um, so 
let me move on to sort of the next big feature, features that we're working on, sort of what we had been doing. Use the clicker again. Uh, manifest and install to home screen. Uh, this is something people care about a lot, uh, particularly the prompt. I think uh, Nolan Lawson uh, he said at one point that, uh, I think it was him, uh, he really, like, people like this because it's almost like the browser advertising for your site. So it's an important feature. Um, we've been working on it a lot. Uh, Marcos Caceres, sorry if I'm mispronouncing his last name, has been working on the manifest spec. Uh, he's one of the editors, and he's been working on the platform support. And that is largely implemented and ready to go. However, we're not shipping it yet because we still need to integrate it with our product. Uh, Firefox for Android and Firefox Desktop, the product side is a separate team. So we're working to make that product integration happen now. Um, it's taking a little bit longer than we'd like, but it is coming. You may have seen some screenshots on uh, Twitter, and uh, um, I believe this was shown at uh, Google I.O. This was an experiment we ran in Firefox for Android um, to show what a prompt might look like, just to see how people would react. Um, I just want to, so, th so this is something we could do. And um, I, I just want to highlight, because I think there was some miscommunication around this. This is, this is just an experiment. It's not shipping yet. We're still working on it. And we really need to get some designers to sit down and figure out how we want to do this. Do we want to do a problem like this? Or do we really want to do something more like Alex uh, suggested in a blog post, like ambient badging? We, we need to figure out what, what the right answer is for the users. Um, and the other interesting thing about this is this demo or experiment did not use manifest at all. It's installing the home screen as a bookmark using the, uh, the link and meta tags in the, the document. So this is actually a nice example of uh, progressive behavior here where the feature isn't there, and yet uh, it's still providing a, a good experience for users. So just to make clear, we, we don't have a, a release date yet for add to home screen. I just wanted to clear up any confusion there. But we are working on it. Background sync um, is another feature. It's um, well into development. Actually, just as I was sitting over there, uh, Fernando Jimenez Moreno, again, I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong, I apologize, um, landed, not landed, but he submitted all his patches for review. And he has patches that are working, and so uh, excellent. I, I was actually expecting that to happen later, because he's getting married. I have um, visions of him sitting at the church, like uploading patches before the ceremony. Uh, but so I'm very, I'm very optimistic that this, will, this feature will land in the Firefox 51 timeframe, assuming code review goes well, which it will. And uh, he, this is a demo he, he made. Um, I was going to try to live demo this, but I, I thought that using non-standard patches and a custom build in a presentation was tempting the presentation gods too much. So here, um, it, it's showing that when, when it's online and you register for a background sync, you, get the note, you can get it immediately. If you're offline and you get uh, register for background sync, um, you don't get the event immediately until it comes online and then it fires. So it's a pretty simple demo. It's not terribly flashy, but it works. And again, this is something we'll probably ship mainly on desktop first. Support in Android will be there, but it's not going to be tightly integrated at first with, the with like, I believe Android has a background sync task or process that uh, native apps can integrate with. We will, we will eventually integrate with that for features like this, but the initial uh, feature launch probably will, will not. Um, let's see. And then finally, there, there are a lot more uh, APIs that we're working on that are related. I forgot I had the clicker here. Uh, and I'll just go through these quickly. I just, there, we're, we're doing a lot of work. Um, we've shipped the full cache API, including things like uh, ignore search. So if you're doing a cache busting parameter, search parameter, uh, you can use ignore search in your cache.match um, to easily um, ignore that cache busting parameter. Uh, we've shipped request.refer and support for the re refer policy 
um, in Firefox 47, which is our current release. Um, in our next release, in about four weeks, request.cache will, will um, reach release channel, and this will let you, you won't even have to do a cache busting parameter, you can just do fetch URL, cache, no cache, to, uh, to avoid even the need for cache busting parameters. Uh, we're working on SRI integrity support for fetch, so you can set an integrity value on fetches, and then in your service worker, you'll be able to inspect that integrity value. Those patches are, are mostly reviewed, should land soon. Um, streams support, Streams API has, has begun. It's probably gonna land in stages uh, with pure JavaScript streams, the ability to say new readable stream uh, first, so we can get it in the tree in SpiderMonkey and run the tests on it, and then we'll land our binding support afterwards. So we're probably we're hoping to get the JS streams into 50, and then 51, 52 will have binding support and fetch body stream. Um, and I'm really looking forward to this getting streams spec'd into more APIs so that we can use this in more places than just fetch. And we've also begun work on storage API, which is the API which uh, lets sites request uh, persistent storage offline. So if it's your um, hotel reservation or your airline you know, uh, boarding pass, the site can say, don't delete this without asking the user, because the user's going to be upset if it's gone, because they're going to need it. Uh, so this has just started. It has a lot of uh, user experience elements to it to, in order to manage storage. So. Uh, we don't have a release date yet for this. Um, I think I just want to leave you with though, Mozilla cares about the web, and we care about the mobile web, and we're we're spending a lot of time and effort investing in that, and uh, trying to provide you with the tools that you need to provide good experiences for your customers. So, uh, really looking forward to see what you guys build, and if you have feedback or concerns or feature requests, reach out to us. Um, I'm here th uh, today, Salva's here. We also have Brian Clark, who's a product manager for our DevTools team, is here also. Come and find us, let us know what you think, where you'd like to see the platform go. And uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing what you guys build with this stuff. It's going to be great. And these slides are online. Uh, it's about five megabyte downloads, so I, I wouldn't do this on your mobile necessarily, but uh, it does offline with the service worker once you download them first. So if you want to follow any of the links or check it out, uh, they're available there. And it's on GitHub too. So thank you very much. I appreciate time today.